Antonio. What a handsome lad. Rich, famous, and smart. Whenever he walked into a room, the young ladies cannot resist to look and watch at him as he walks through the room. Antonio, with his black hair, blue eyes, tall stature, he was the picture of the ideal lover. Just ask any fortune teller. But, fellow Toastmasters, Mr. Toastmaster, Antonio's heart was bitter. Antonio's heart was unhappy. You see, Antonio had a brother, a twin brother, Carlos. And Carlos was a little bit older than Antonio. He was a bit more richer than Antonio, a bit more smarter, and, to and behold, even a little bit more handsome than Antonio. So although he was the coveted bachelor in town, that's Antonio, he always lived under the shadow of his brother. Whenever his mother would say, Oh, Carlos, we love you so much. Or when his father would say, Carlos, well done. It's a dagger through Antonio's heart to hear those words. From the beginning, he tried to compete in every event. But every time it was Carlos that turned out to be the victor. And so resentment started to grow in his heart. The only one that ever would give him praise was his uncle Hubert, his eccentric godfather. And his praises got lost and drowned in his own thoughts of jealousy, hatred, disgust. Both of them were avid fox hunters. They, that was the tradition of the Devaldo family. By the time he was 21, he already gathered a good harvest of thoughts of hatred and jealousy against his brother. Few people saw it. He hid it well behind his broad smile. And few people would have thought that he's sitting night after night, pondering, plotting, how he could beat his brother. On his 25th birthday, the Divaldo family decided to have a hunt to celebrate his birthday, a fox hunt. Three weeks before that, his uncle Hubert sent him a present. He gasped with amazement. And before him stood a black stallion. The best horse he have ever seen. And when he felt the power of the animal beneath him, he knew why the animal was called Mighty Wings of Power. And as he rode it for the first time, he knew this is his chance. The great honor in the tradition of the Devaldo family is the one who leads the hunt. And he knew with this horse, he can lead the hunt. He can go in front. Normally it was Carlos, of course. But this time, it will be different. So he went down and he sat down and he planned. What if this? What if that? What if? Damn, what if his brother wins again and lead the hunt? What if? What if he stepped the odds just a little bit in his favor? and sabotage his brother's saddle. And so, bold on his own fears, a dragon grew in him. And on the day of the hunt, on his birthday, he slipped silently into the stables, and he loosened the saddle of his brother, just a little bit. You won't realize it when you get mount horse, but when you go on a fast ride, you will feel it's a shift. 
and you'll have to slow down. And that will give him the edge. He believed in that edge that he needs. So from the first moment, the first blow of the horn, they were off charging after the first fox. And he was right in front, spurring on mighty wings of power. And he knew the land. He knew the hunting strategies. And he knew the fox was heading for a great hedge. And he will make the jump first. And everybody will know that he led the hunt. As he charged forwards, he thought, eat my dust. As he increased the distance between him and the pack following. And as he neared the hedge, he was charging forward, confident, knowing that he can make the jump. And he made the jump, and while he was in the jump, he was flying, he felt for the first time a sense of significance returning to him. He was leading the hunt. But as he got to the other side and looked back, nobody was following him. The other riders was quite a distance far away, standing still in a circle. He galloped back. Antonio, your brother, he has fallen, he broke his neck. He jumped off the horse, kneeled next to his brother. Carlos opened his eyes and he said, Antonio, that was a great jump. And he breathed his last breath. He died, never to ride a horse again. Antonio didn't tell anybody that he meddled with the saddle. He became the best. He led the hunt, but he lost his brother. And for the rest of the life, he lived with the regret. Although nobody could say that it was that meddling that caused his brother's fall. But he knew it. And he lived with the regret that just might, maybe, it was his direct meddling with the saddle that caused his brother's death. Mr. Thomas Master.